Hello, my friends. I hope that you're staying safe out there. Um, I wanted to record this video because I just was talking to a lot of people in the last few days. And with the whole term of social distancing becoming a thing where um, we're trying to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus by being physically apart and people self-isolating, I think we have to be very careful that we're not end up feeling lonely because there's certain health risks that are associated with feeling lonely as well. And as I was doing some research for a blog post that I just uh, published, which I'll link in the comments below where you can read all the details, um, here's the thing that, that worries me a little bit. Yes, with less human interaction, which is totally the right thing to do, we will help stop the spread of this virus, but also, uh, but like social distancing doesn't mean that we have to isolate ourselves socially um, because there's studies that have shown that um, having poor social connections and feeling lonely is harm as harmful to your health as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. It uh, can increase depression and blood pressure and death of heart disease. And I think the one study that actually was quite, um, quite important to look at right now is they say if you feel lonely, if you experience loneliness and isolation, it can weaken your immune system because your body is in this constant flight or fight mode and it starts producing a lot of stress hormones and that will actually um, weaken your immune system and therefore you will be not as uh, not as well able to to fight a virus if, if you actually get sick. So I created this blog post with just a couple of ideas of things that you can do if you're by yourself, if you're so uh, self isolating yourself, if you're sitting at home, how can we use technology to actually connect with each other a little bit more. And for the last few years, I've been saying this over and over. I actually think that our smartphones are a big barrier in helping us connect because they are a big distraction, having the notifications uh, go off while you're sharing a story with someone is making them feel super unimportant and unseen. Um, but at this time, I think we have to start looking at how can we leverage technology in helping us still invest in human connections. Um, so here is five tips that that I want to share with you that uh, that I just wrote in my blog post to help you create more human interactions. First of all, send more audio and video messages. It's so easy to use things like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp to quickly send an audio or a video message. And it's so much more personal than just writing a text message. And I even invite you like with all of those ideas, see how you can make them more fun. Fun and humor is is a way that we really need to use right now to make people kind of get their minds off the whole panic mode and, and remember that we're all human. Like this will, we'll be able to conquer this, this will go away, but we can't just be in this constant panic mode. And humor and play is a great, great tool to help us get through that. So have a look at all the Facebook Messenger um, filters of putting cats on your head and adding different things to your eyes. And you when you open your mouth, uh, like a, a rose comes flying in. Use those filters and have fun with it. Send messages to your friends. Um, that's the first one. The second one is set up more FaceTime dates. So the you can send messages or you could actually do something live. And instead of just having a live video call, which I think we're all pretty used to, again, I invite you, how can we make this more fun? Can you combine the video call with a fun activity? Like, could you be watching a movie together? Uh, or a Netflix show? Could you be cooking together and having lunch together? So uh, I was actually thinking of for my lunch break today, I will just open up a Zoom video conference and just see if anybody's there who wants to have lunch with me. So I don't have to have lunch by myself. Um, think of different ways to, yeah, to get more creative. Uh, another thing I'll be doing more is using my Ask Deep Questions cards to just facilitate some conversations virtually. 
Um, which brings me to the third, the third point, which is all about hosting your own virtual events. And again, I made a list of the things that are probably the most fun and things that I will be doing myself in the next few weeks, which is um, some of you might even remember, I used to host these virtual dance parties. They would be three minutes long. They would last one song and people would just get on again, a Zoom video conference call and people would just be dancing in front of their screens for like three minutes for the duration of a song. Um, it was a ton of fun. And it made me think, well, what if we could do like a virtual lip sync battle or a virtual karaoke night, um, virtual charades or games night? Like you can get super creative with these tools. And I actually just found out that with Zoom, you can create all these breakout rooms. Um, and I'm super, super excited. And I'll be sharing more about how to use that in the next week or so. Um, I'm super excited to host some, some virtual events and try to recreate the types of environments that I have at my physical live events. Um, number four is now a lot of people who are working from home or might be not going out anymore, you might have some extra time on your hands. So why not start reading one of the books that you have on the stack of things, uh, of books on your bookshelf um, and start a book club or pick up a new skill uh, through an online course and get a bunch of friends to join you and hold each other accountable. This is such a great way to learn something new, but also connect with people and stay in touch with them. Um, there's also other things like my friend Eline is doing these deep work sprints where you can virtually co-work with other entrepreneurs. Um, my friends April and Gary have the accountability success circle, which is all around accountability and it's this whole online community. Um, there's a bunch of things that are happening online, which is my fifth point. Um, start looking to find your communities online. It's, uh, compared to finding people in the physical location that you're at, that you have something in common, especially if it's a very specific niche interest. I can promise you that online that community already exists. So if you haven't made a list of all your super niche, weird little interests and started looking at different things like Facebook groups or just Googling if there's any forum where those people congregate that really want to nerd out on that topic, then this might be the perfect opportunity to reach out and meet some new people that way. Um, so those are my, my five tips. I'll repeat them again if you're just tuning in. Now, number one, send more personal video messages and audio messages because they're so much more personal than uh, just text. Number two, set up more live video calls with your friends and make them more fun by maybe making dinner together or uh, watching a movie together. Number three is host your own virtual events. So if that is a virtual dance party, a virtual games night, um, use tools like Zoom video conference, which is great to host those. Um, number four is start your or join uh, a book club or a mastermind or any time of group that has the same goal and you can hold each other accountable. And number five is find your people online. Look for communities that you can join where people are aligned with your with your values, with your interests. And um, I'm actually one thing I'm considering with this whole shift in uh, in in atmosphere and um, a lot of my events have been canceled, a lot of the workshops I was going to give. So I'm trying to think of new ways to do things online. And um, if you know about my Find Your People online course that is there to help you create more meaningful friendships as adults, I'm considering adding a chapter or maybe a couple of episodes on how you can do that in a time of social distancing where you can't actually leave your house or uh, have physical contact with people. Um, I'm not sure yet if that's the direction I want to go in, but if you're watching this video and this sounds interesting to you, please let me know in the comments. Um, also let me know if you have any other ideas that you have to bring people together to make sure that we invest in human connection in in this time that uh, really doesn't allow us to be meeting face to face. Um, 
yeah, please let me know in the comments. And lastly, I want to say that now is the time where more than ever we need to be kind to each other. Everybody is dealing with this challenge in their own way. So um, if you're experiencing the, these feelings of panic come up, make sure that you reach out. Reach out to me, reach out to one of your friends, um, talk about it, don't hide and, and isolate yourself completely. And then um, hopefully this, when this all blows over, and we go back to our regular lives, we can have these strong relationships that we, we can count on. So I hope that this message was helpful on this nice little Friday morning. And um, yeah, I'll post the link to the blog post with all the details below right now. Bye bye.